Hi, I'm Pastor Gene, the director of our Passion Play Outreach, and I'll be your host as we look at the death and resurrection of Jesus. Christ was born at a time filled with many difficulties. The people were faced with the oppression of the mighty Roman army, and the nations were looking at a disease that was incurable called leprosy. Yet God chose that time to send his son to make the greatest impact the world has ever known. Christ came and taught us how to live and how to overcome the biggest storms of life. I invite you to join me and the Passion Play Pastors as we discuss the healing and the peace and encouragement and salvation that God offers to those who put their trust in him. The drama begins in a stable in Bethlehem, for without Jesus in the manger there is no story. And it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. So all went to be registered, everyone to his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife, who was with child. There came a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify about the light so that all might believe through him. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make his path straight. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bring forth fruit worthy of repentance. Who are you? The Christ? I am not the Christ. Are you Elijah, then? I am not. Are you the prophet? No. Then who are you? What do you say about yourself? Tell your masters, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Among you stands one whom you do not know. Who is the one? Behold, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. But he who sent me to baptize with water said to me, He on whom you see the Spirit descend and remain, this is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. I tell you now, I saw the Spirit descend upon him. This is the Son of God. Jesus was no ordinary man. In him, the living God became true man. Motivated by love, the light of the world took on human flesh so that he could be the spotless sacrifice to pay the penalty for sin. As he began his ministry, he spoke words of truth and performed miracles with those hands. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the gentle, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. Blessed are those who have been persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. I say to you who hear, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. Treat others the same way you want them to treat you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. But love your enemies and do good 
and lend, expecting nothing in return. And your reward will be great, and you will be the sons of the Most High. For he himself is kind to ungrateful and evil men. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. It is human nature to focus on satisfying our desires. We hunger for things we need, some hunger for peace of mind, some hunger for knowledge, some for answers to life's big questions. Why are we here? What's wrong with the world? Is there a God? So they come to him and he challenges them. Truly I say to you, you seek me not because you saw signs, but because you ate of the loaves and were filled. Do not work for food which perishes, but for the food which endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give to you. For on him the Father, God, has set his seal. Were they filled with the knowledge of God? Were they filled with a love for God? With a love for the kingdom of God? A passion for God's kingdom? No, they were filled in their tummies. And for them, that was enough. What shall we do so that we may perform the works of God? This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. We are to eat and drink him, receive him as our necessary food. So this consuming of Jesus is taking him to ourselves as our Redeemer King. It's not about our tummies or even about our mortal bodies. It's about that special part of us, our eternal souls. What then do you do for a sign so that we may see and believe you? Our fathers ate the manna in the wilderness. As it is written, he gave them bread out of heaven to eat. Truly, truly, I say to you, it is not Moses who has given you the bread out of heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread out of heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down out of heaven and gives life to the world. The food Jesus gives, his body and blood, answers the deepest need of man. Lord, always give us this bread. I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will not hunger, and he who believes in me will never thirst. For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who beholds the Son and believes in him will have eternal life. And I myself will raise him up on the last day. Son of David, have mercy on me! Son of David! Have mercy on me! I can see, I can see the, this Jesus. I've been healed. We see Jesus healing the blind man, the woman with the issue of blood, and the lame boy. There were many miracles that he did, and they astonished the people. In fact, it touched their lives forever in a very special way. But we might ask the question, why did Jesus do these miracles? I think there are at least three reasons. First of all, is the compassion that God has towards people. Second is the power of the Son of God to overcome the obstacles of sin and death. And third, people are important to God. The greatest act of love, the ultimate act of compassion Jesus gave was the cross. Jesus ate with his disciples in the upper room, and from there he led them to a little garden spot known as Gethsemane to pray. And he said to them, My soul is deeply grieved to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. And he went and fell on his face and prayed. Then the soldiers and the mob arrived, guided by Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve. Judas, are you betraying the Son of Man with a kiss? Ah. 
Have you come out with swords and clubs as against a robber? Every day I was with you in the temple, and you did not lay hands on me. But this hour belongs to you and the powers of darkness. Jesus was taken captive, and his disciples fled into the night. You were with him. Who are you talking about? Jesus. You are his disciple. Jesus? I, I don't know him. Yes. You were with Jesus. Do you hear his accent? He's from Galilee. Didn't you hear me? I don't know the man. What is your name? You were his disciple. I saw you. You fool! You are mistaken! I do not know Jesus! And Peter remembered what Jesus had spoken to him, that he would deny him three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. When morning came, all the chief priests and elders of the people who plotted against Jesus to put him to death bound Jesus and led him away and delivered him to Pontius Pilate the governor. Pontius Pilate, governor of Judea, requests your presence. What is your charge against this man? He claims to be the king of the Jews. We would not bring him before you if he were not a criminal. Then take him away and judge him by your laws. But we want to have him crucified, and your approval is required. Your own people and their chief priests brought you here. Why? Are you the king of the Jews? Yes. I was born for this purpose. And I came to bring truth to the world. But my kingdom, my kingdom is not of this world. He is not guilty of any crime. Nothing this man has done calls for the death penalty. Now the custom was that the governor would release one Jewish prisoner each year during the Passover celebration. Anyone the people chose. This year there was also in prison a notorious criminal named Barabbas. He had been found guilty of murder. As the crowd gathered before Pilate, he asked them, Which shall I release to you, Barabbas or Jesus? Barabbas! What shall I do then with this Jesus? If you release this Jesus, you are no friend of Caesar. Anyone who declares himself a king is a rebel against Caesar, and that this Jesus has done. Shall I crucify your king? We have no king but Caesar. The responsibility is yours. Take him yourself and crucify him. I find no fault with this man. I wash my hands of this matter. Release Barabbas. Then Pilate released Barabbas and gave Jesus to the crowd to crucify.
Isaiah prophesied about the Messiah. He said he would be a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we did not esteem him. Behold your dear, your king of Jews! Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. During Passover, a spotless lamb was taken up to Jerusalem. The high priest would offer it as a sacrifice on behalf of all the nations. Did you know that it was at the same hour in that same city that Jesus was crucified for crimes he did not commit? And he did that for you and for me. While he was on that cross, God himself placed the sins of the entire world upon his son. Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. Woman, behold your son. Behold, your mother. Jesus was nailed to the cross in a public place on Passover about nine o'clock in the morning. He was mocked and ridiculed by the priests and the crowd and those who passed by. About noon, a deep darkness fell upon the whole land lasted for three more agonizing hours. My God! My God! Why have you forsaken me? It's finished. Father, into your hands I commit my spirit.
bodies of crucified criminals were usually left hanging and then cast into a common grave. But there was a friend and disciple of Jesus named Joseph of Arimathea, a rich man who had purchased a garden tomb for his own use. He gave this tomb for Jesus to be buried in. Now when evening came, Joseph went to Pilate to ask for the body of Jesus. Pilate commanded the body be given to him. Joseph and Nicodemus wrapped the body in clean linen with ointments and spices as was the Jewish custom for burial. They took the body of Jesus to Joseph's own tomb and rolled a stone against the opening. The chief priests and Pharisees remembered Jesus had said that after three days he would rise from the dead. So they went to Pilate and requested him to place a guard on the tomb so that Jesus' disciples would not try to steal the body and say that he had risen. This Jesus has said that in three days he would rise from the dead. <laughs> we feel that his disciples might steal the body and say that this has happened. We would ask that you place guards at the entrance of the tomb to prevent this. They would try anything to make us believe that Jesus has risen. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. The disciples were distraught, and many of them had fled. The women came to show their respects. The last thing that they expected to see on that first Easter Sunday morning was an empty tomb. But God had a plan all along. It's so important we have to ask this question. If Jesus Christ didn't raise from the dead, what chance do you and I have? But praise God, he did. This is what Paul said in 1 Corinthians 15. He said, I delivered to you first of all that which also I received, that Christ Jesus died for our sins according to the scripture, and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures, and that he was seen then by Peter then by the twelve, and after that he was seen by over five hundred people at once, of whom the greater part remain to this day. But be of good cheer. What he's saying here is that it doesn't matter what our problems are, what our tribulations are. He says, don't let that worry you. Don't let that take your joy. Don't let that take your peace. In fact, he even says, be of good cheer. Be happy regardless. And he says this, which makes this all possible. I have overcome the world. And as believers, we are overcomers alongside of him. Peter. <laughs> Peter, do you love me? Yes, Lord. You know that I love you. Then feed my sheep. Jesus presented himself alive after his suffering by many infallible proofs for 40 days. And then he took his disciples to the mountains of Galilee, and there he instructed them to be witnesses to him and to preach the gospel to all nations. These are my words, which I spoke to you while I was yet with you, that all the things must be fulfilled, which have been written in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms concerning me. Thus it is written that the Christ should suffer and rise up from the dead on the third day. And that repentance for forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in His name 
to all the nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And behold, I am sending forth the promise of my Father upon you. But you stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. The word of God is and shall always be true. Christ took the form of man and became a servant to do the will of the Father. That led him to Calvary. In humility he came to die for our sins. His holy, sinless life was the price he paid for us at the cross. But it did not end at the cross. He arose. I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. We are so glad that you watched our presentation. All of this was put together to portray a single message, and that is God has hope for you today through Jesus Christ. The God of creation knows you by name, and he invites you to have a personal relationship with him. In a brief moment, we will have a message about salvation, so continue watching. But if you have any prayer needs or would like to talk to a pastor, I invite you to go to our website at thesunriseservice.com. Give us a call. We can talk and encourage you in your walk with him. But I look forward to seeing you next year at our Easter Passion Play at Vasquez Rocks. Salvation is a gift uh, that's given to us graciously by a loving God. Salvation is uh, not earned by man's efforts. Salvation is humbly accepted by a person who's broken over sin heartbroken over things in their lives and they accept God's gift of salvation and that brings them hope in their lives. So I, I urge you today, if you feel in this your heart that you're not sure if you know the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray today you place your faith in him and re receive salvation. Speaking of Jesus, the Bible says he came to his own and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, they have salvation by receiving Jesus Christ. He is the gift and the giver himself. Father God, we do come before you now humbly. If we would just place our faith and hope in you, trust you, Lord Jesus, for our salvation and for open this life and in the earth in the life to come. Those who are called by your name would humble themselves and seek your face repent and humbly go to you for answers, Father God. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.